is costing on now while they wait for another hurricane to hit their state. A mandatory evacuation is now underway south of the U.M. in the Florida Keys. Folks are lining up on the highways to leave town. They're also lining up in the home improvement stores, as you might imagine, buying tools and equipment to get their homes ready again for the storm. Rick Leventhal has his galoshes and his Smurf suit ready, but today not necessary. The calm, I suppose, Tricky. Yeah, it's a pretty nice day actually here in Key West. It's hot and muggy, but uh, uh, not too bad. But anybody who's been down here knows that on a Friday afternoon, the streets would be packed with cars and the sidewalk shoulder to shoulder with tourists. And as you can see, Duval Street, the main drag in Key West, I can walk out in the middle of the street and there is virtually nobody out here. You can see the storefronts are all pretty much boarded up. In fact, uh, to our left over here, you can see some more guys uh, boarding up their storefront down the block there. In fact, Chris Pontius just went down the street to uh, Sloppy Joe's down this way, one of Key West's most famous bars. Take a look at some pictures he shot. Sloppy Joe's is closed, as are most of the bars and restaurants in town now. Uh, the grocery stores are either closed or closing tonight at 6 o'clock. Police tell me that half of Key West's 28,000 residents or so have heeded the evacuation orders, but they cannot force people to get out. Of course, the, uh, uh, the tourists and the non-residents were told to leave Key West yesterday, and the rest of the Keys were told to evacuate today. Starting with Key West at 7 a.m., the uh, Middle Keys, Marathon, Duck Key, Con Key, and others were told to evacuate after noon today, and after 4 o'clock this afternoon, the Upper Keys are being told, get out. Ocean Reef, Key Largo, Isla Mirada, not just visitors, but residents, too, because Ivan is coming. Of course, Ivan has done uh, terrible damage in the Caribbean, now headed for Jamaica, as you mentioned. Uh, the residents there, half a million told to get out of the low-lying coastal areas. Uh, all businesses have been closed in Kingston, which could be right in the path of Ivan with those powerful Category 4 winds. It's expected to hit Jamaica late tonight or early Saturday, and there are warnings of life-threatening flash floods and mudslides. Uh, Cuba, of course, also uh, in the path of this storm. And Fidel Castro going on television today, or last night actually, to warn residents and to tell people that uh, if everybody sticks together, uh, things should be okay. And of course, Shepard, Florida now in the position of recovering from two storms, getting ready for another. And the people of Key West, they haven't had a serious Category 4, category four storm hit this island in 85 years. You can understand why some people, Shep, might be a little nonchalant about this one. Yeah, no doubt. And we'll talk a little bit more about that because as some of our viewers may know, 67,000 residents in Monroe County, which is the Keys and a little bit of the southern tip of Florida. And the tax structure has changed down there so much over the past few years. Property taxes have gone sky high, and a lot of people who live there their whole lives had to move away because they couldn't afford the taxes anymore, which means there's this whole new crowd of people down there. As Rick just mentioned, a whole new crowd of people who've never dealt with this. They're a hardy lot. They haven't been evacuating for many years. And there are a lot of worries about what happens if they don't evacuate this time. We'll get out to more of that with Rick in just a few minutes. But first, so what's Ivan likely to do after Jamaica? Will it hit once again in the state of Florida? Our Foxcaster Janice Dean is here, the weather machine checking it out. And Janice, I guess now a little bit of westward movement. It looks like it, Shepard. Absolutely. Just a little bit of westward movement, and it changes the track ever so slightly. Let's take a look at it. Of course, Category 4, we know that. 145 mile per hour sustained winds, and we still have watches and warnings in effect. Of course, a hurricane watch for the whole area of Cuba as this thing comes through, as well as Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, and a little bit of Haiti and Dominican Republic. Let's look at this latest track. Of course, uh, the next one comes out at 5 o'clock. We'll be keep you posted on that 140 mile per hour sustained winds up to 145 when it crosses western Cuba and then look what it does it kind of hugs the west coast and then moves up the center of this track into the eastern panhandle but I want to tell you that we are still far away from seeing really where this thing is going so a window of opportunity it could move as far west as New Orleans it could also move as far east as the east coast of Florida so all of these areas you want to be keeping watch on this storm in the next 24 to 48 hours to see what it does. And Shepard, we're not even into peak season yet. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. That cone of consequences you're looking at there, all the way on the west side over there where Hurricane Camille hit, what, 40 years ago and just about destroy the Mississippi coast. Well, and I think I want to make sure that people know that, of course, we don't want it to hit Florida. We are doing a lot of wish casting, but we want to make sure that people know across the Gulf Coast this thing still has a lot of time to decide where it's going to go, and the Gulf Coast waters are warm and ripe for this thing. Yep, yeah, sure are. Janice Dean, the weather machine, thank you. More on Hurricane Ivan in just a few minutes. You know, one thing is, after you get past Cuba and before you get to Florida, 
there's some dry air in there and there's some mid-level shearing and shearing is basically wind that cuts across and sort of chops the tops off hurricanes in a perfect world. It might slow it down. It might. We'll talk with a meteorologist about how the path of the storm could change over just the next few hours and we'll ask Neil Cavuto to join us to talk about Ivan's impact on the economy, not just in Florida, but making a dent in your wallet all over America. 